Innovating Education Learning World in association with WISE, an initiative of Qatar Foundation. When Tunisian students took to the streets three years ago, they hoped that political change could also improve education. So are problems like illiteracy, high dropout rates and a lack of support for researchers still plaguing the system? Or are things improving? Well, it is impossible to improve educational outcomes for young people who don't come to school in the first place. And since the revolution, absenteeism rates have soared. Understanding what is keeping young people away and persuading them to come back to class is a major preoccupation for teachers. We visited one school to find out how they are doing. In 2011, Veld Michel's voice filled the squares of Tunis as thousands took to the streets demanding change. He dropped out of school at 16, teaching himself music. He is, he says, a product of his country's education system. I would have become a teacher of music. Sorry, it's very hard. Although I love music a lot, but culture has a role and education has a role. Maybe I would have chosen to be a doctor or a lawyer. Three years after the revolution, many young people feel little has changed for the better with their education system. I'm not happy with education in Tunisia at all. There are lots of problems. The most serious are with administration and teachers. I wanted to stop studying, but my dad told me you have to go to school because your future depends on it. Official figures show almost 100,000 students dropped out of school in 2012, an increase of nearly 30% on previous years. Many families still can't afford school supplies and students who took part in demonstrations found it difficult to return to their studies. Now educators are calling for urgent reform. The whole system has deteriorated. A system which consists of the educator, administration, parents, and with all the responsibility coming from the state. You feel the youth are lost in the revolution. Parents are passive. The whole system needs to be changed. I hope the reforms come from this government, or the next one, or whoever's in charge. I hope they take seriously the need for radical education reform. Students are also demanding an improvement in education resources. Many complain about the overly traditional curricula and a lack of the latest teaching tools. The private sector is better resourced, but it's too expensive for most. With little impetus on reform, educators fear a bleak future. They will find themselves in the streets, and the streets are full of danger. Now there is jihad in Syria. Drugs, loss of morals and unemployment. An uneducated, unemployed young person has no future and may get into trouble. The school dropout rate is fueling another problem, high unemployment. As the government struggles to cope with these linked challenges, young people say there's little cause for hope in post-revolution Tunisia. Adequate funding is crucial for any reform to be effective at a national level. But, on a personal level, one woman has shown the world just how much can be achieved with the most basic equipment. Let's meet Hayat Omri, who is carrying out research in an outdated lab at her university and even from a small room in her home. Hayat is from Sidi Bouzed, an impoverished province that was ground zero during the revolution. It was here that street vendor Mohamed Bouzizi's desperate act of self-immolation triggered an uprising across the country. Today, Sidi Bouzed is making headlines for different reasons. Hayat's remarkable innovations in chemistry. Working from home, she achieved her dream with minimum funding. <laughs> If a researcher at the age of 27 or 28 has to take money from his father, this is a huge burden, especially with a lack of support from the Ministry of Higher Education or State. Even if there's a scholarship, it's very minimal. 
With less than 1% of the country's GDP going to scientific research, Hayat relied on her parents for financial support. After gaining a PhD in applied chemistry, she began to win prizes for her innovations. In 2008, she was recognized as a top researcher in Mediterranean countries by the EU. She won a gold medal at the 2013 International Inventor Olympiad in Tunisia. The percentage of researchers is very high in different fields. But to be able to accomplish their research, they need to do it through partnerships between Tunisia and other countries, because there's a lack of developed equipment here. Because of the lack of resources and facilities, Hayat had to do her research with basic materials. She even used some from her father's small farm to do experiments. One of Hayat's recent projects is on developments to phosphoric acid, which could have economic and environmental benefits for her country. She aims to inspire other researchers in the Arab world facing similar constraints. <laughs> Like any researcher in the Arab world, we face red lines which you cannot cross, especially in the field of chemistry. This was for sure the case before the revolution. You can't work on uranium or extract it or use it. With the current political instability, Tunisians face an uncertain future, but Hayat remains optimistic that she at least can bring about change through her research. What about gender bias? How can women be encouraged to achieve at least the same literacy rates as men? And further down the line, what's the best way to teach them skills that will enable them to move into work? We went along to find out how one NGO is trying to help. Many women in Tunisia look back to the presidency of Habib Bourguiba, the founder of modern Tunisia, with pride. In 1956, he granted women an array of rights, including access to higher education and divorce. He also legalized abortion and outlawed polygamy. But activists say complete democratic rights were never achieved, and with today's political upheaval and conservative trends, some women feel threatened. The Tunisian woman is afraid more than ever. Some people blame unemployment among men on women working. People are calling on Tunisian women to stay at home. We're threatened in our work, education, rights, achievements and our dignity. 25% of illiterate people in Tunisia are women and females make up less than 30% of the working population. The National Union of Tunisian Women, in cooperation with the government, has launched a nationwide program to eradicate illiteracy. I want to be educated because it will help me to set up a shop. I want to be able to calculate and know how much money to give back to customers. The National Union of Tunisian Women aims to encourage women to fight conservative attitudes, particularly in rural areas. Many poor families don't send their daughters to school so their sons can get an education. The union has established classes around the country to equip women with literacy and other skills. Aisha is in her second university year, but is also learning to make scarves. <laughs> Because studying takes a long time and job opportunities are limited, I chose something else to make the most of my time. The percentage of women who succeed and excel in education is higher than men, but that's not reflected in employment. In Tunisia, gender parity seems a long way off. Do you live in Tunisia? Did you go to school here or are your children in school here? Have things changed in the classroom since the revolution? Do share your ideas with us on our social media pages. Well, that's all we have time for. So goodbye from all the Learning World team here in Tunisia.
Learning World in association with WISE, an initiative of Qatar Foundation.